story is one that was a traditional story that Virginia Hamilton had really recaptured for us. It's called The People Who Could Fly. African story is black his story, and black his story is African story. It's time to gather around and tell every word. It's time to gather around, then go tell the word of African story. It's black his story. Now there was a time a long time ago, they say that in this place, this, this country called Africa, that's not right. Africa is not a country. You do know that, right? This continent called Africa, this big place continent called Africa, there were many, many countries, and within all those countries, there were all of these villages. Now, in one of these particular villages, there was a group of people who had an incredible gift. They could fly. They could fly. And they say that on any given day, you'd see them up there just a flop in their wings. They looked like a bunch of black, shiny blackbirds up there. And they would greet each other. Ole, 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 I'll say ole. A one a one a one a one Until one day, terrible thing began to happen. People were being captured all over the countries and various villages. People were being snatched away and taken away in boats and packed into the bowels and bellies of these boats like sardines and chained. And they say this thing that became known as the Middle Passage, many of the people who were on board did not survive. And many of those people who were captives were part of the village of that whole group of people who could fly. Well, when these people arrived to this new place, they had no idea where they were, but they knew it was a mighty long place from their home from Mother Africa. When they arrived to this place, they were humiliated. Even further, they were stripped naked and they were placed on these things called auction blocks. And mothers and fathers were separated from each other and children were separated from their mothers and their fathers. Sold off to places known as plantations all over the place. Well, on this particular plantation, there was this girl, young girl, called Sarah. And Sarah had a little baby. And here Sarah was out here working in the fields this particular day. And as the way it would go in this particular, on this particular plantation, Sarah's baby began to cry as babies do when the mother was working hard. And Sarah stopped for a moment to try and calm the baby down. And about that time, an overseer, this is a person who helped the old Masa. Masa, by the way, is the one who was the one owning all of the property and all of the slaves. Well, this overseer came over to Sarah and he said, shut that baby up or else I'll take care of it myself. Well, she knew that could mean nothing of any good. So she began to calm the baby down, and then the baby went back to sleep. And Sarah went back to work. And as soon as she got to going back to work, the baby started crying again. And she pulled the baby close to her, trying to calm it down before the overseer would come. And of course, he came right back, and he smacked Sarah, and he said, Give me that piccaninny or I'll take care of it myself. And just as he was reaching down to get the baby, John, come here, John. Now that was old Massa calling the overseer. And everybody knew that it's whatever you were doing, if old Massa called, you go right immediately. You don't wait, you don't tarry to see what it is that he wanted. He looked at Sarah and he says, I'll be back to take care of you and that piccaninny. Well, on the other side of the plantation, way across the field, there was an old man named Toby. And for some reason, Toby was feeling a little anxious that day. 
Turns out Toby was from this group of people who could fly. And Toby was old and feeble, and he certainly didn't remember how to fly. But somewhere deep inside, he just felt that maybe one day, one day. Meanwhile, Sarah is over here holding her baby, not knowing what to do, not knowing what that man was going to do to her child. And she just started moaning and rocking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child a long ways from home a long ways from home and she thought about maybe she should kill the child rather than the horrible things that this man could do to the baby. And just about that time, Sarah looked up and she saw a light. This light was coming from the other side of the, of the farm. And she's wondering, what is that? Well, over where old Toby was, all of a sudden something hit him and he felt it and he could see this light. And this light was leading him directly across the plantation. And he put that cotton sack down and he just hobbled on over there and it brought him right to Sarah. He looked at Sarah and immediately he knew. He said, child, you've got the gift of flying. And Sarah looked up at him holding her baby closer. She says, oh man, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know nothing about no flying. And he said, I want you to open up your mind and understand who you are and where you come from. Child, you can fly. And Sarah didn't have any idea where this particular energy came from, but all of a sudden she lifted one foot and then she lifted another foot and she lifted an arm and another arm and she wasn't even on the ground. And Toby is looking at her and he says, that's it child, you can lead our people to freedom. And she says, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what's going on. And he touched her right there on the face and said, child, believe in your ancestors and where you came from and the power. You can visualize it. You can see we had the magical gift of flying. And all of a sudden, with that wisdom from old Toby and the energy of young Sarah, she said, I do believe. And he said, then lead your people to freedom. Because the funny thing that happened all of a sudden, across that entire plantation, everyone who had that gift of flying, they too were starting to float. And they too were just wondering, what now? What now? And she said, I don't know what to do. The old man said, lead them to freedom. She says, I can't do that. I don't know what freedom is. And she touched him and told him to believe. And pretty soon, old Toby, one foot lifted, and the other foot, and the other arm. And together, they were able to guide all of those people who believed that they could fly that day off into freedom. Well, you should have seen the overseer. You should have seen old Masa. Here they are looking and wondering, what is going on here? Oh, Masa is yelling and screaming, come back here, come back here, get them a shotgun, get them now. There was nothing they could do. The people were gone. But all of those captives who couldn't fly that day, they were standing there and yelling, screaming, take me, take me. 
Sarah looked down and she said to old Toby, we can't leave them there. They've got to go. How do we get them? He said, for now, my child, there's nothing we can do until they recognize the power that they have inside them. And when they do, they too will have the ability to fly. African story is black history. And black history is African story. It's time to gather around and hear every word. It's time to gather around. Didn't go tell the word of African story. It's black history.